Hello everyone, today I'm back in World of Guns, Gun Disassembly and today we have uh, another um, cool uh, sort of old um, service pistol to take a look at. Today we have uh, the Tokarev pistol uh, which uh, was the main uh, service pistol um, of the Soviet Union I guess, of the Red Army. Um, I would say between like uh, the the 30s and the 70s. Um, so basically, it was intended to replace the Nagant revolver, which was uh, the main sidearm before uh, the 30s. And that's a weird sort of re revolver. If you haven't seen that, we'll probably take a look at that at some point. It's a very interesting sort of design. Um, but they went with a, uh, a more modern uh, semi-automatic pistol at that point. Uh, now, of course, uh, the Soviets didn't give pistols to every soldier like, um, for example, the Americans did. Uh, but I think the Americans were probably the exception uh, who gave every soldier a 1911 or almost every soldier a 1911. Um, most other armies in the world, especially at that time, didn't give... Uh, the normal soldier a sidearm, uh, they would just get uh, a rifle and uh, the sidearms were usually reserved for um, some sort of officers um, which would generally just be issued a sidearm. Um, so anyway, let's uh, talk a, lo a little bit about the pistol. Um, it is a, uh, a sort of a browning style pistol uh, as you can see by looking at it, it's sort of uh, got some char characteristics of uh, Browning's uh, pistols. Uh, sort of looks like a 1911. Uh, you can see it's got that lever on the side. Um, got uh, the button mag release. Um, sort of looks very similar in the front. Um, it's got a sort of a different design on the back. Uh, it's got a, a more vertical sort of hammer, uh, which is sort of shrouded more on the side. And the, the sides are a bit different as well. But uh, uh, other than that, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the, the trigger also goes straight back like a 1911. Um, so these pistols uh, were used quite extensively. Um, I guess all of the officers at some point were issued uh, this type of pistol um, and uh, as I said I think they were in service all the way up until the 70s I would say uh, because obviously at that point they would be uh, replaced by the Makarov pistol. Um, so anyway let's field strip this thing and see how it looks inside. Take out the magazine. Um, it's got this interesting sort of clip on the other on the side of the of the frame. Uh, that's a bit different than a 1911. A 1911 just has that uh, cross pin. Um, this has a, a sort of a retention uh, clip for that pin, which is uh, kind of interesting. Um, we can just take that out. We don't have to fiddle with the uh, with the uh, taking out the, the plug and and stuff. Uh, so that's kind of interesting and then the slide just comes off it's got a spring un underneath the barrel just like a 1911 uh, it's got a uh, not a full length guide rod um, and the, the spring obviously is not captured um, you can see it's got a, a similar sort of bushing on the front like a 1911 the barrel also uh, very similar to a 1911 um, but this one, this one, for some reason, has uh, the locking lugs go all the way around to the barrel. Um, on the 1911, I believe they're only on the top. Uh, honestly, I could be wrong. I don't remember right now. Uh, but um, you can see the 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 falling or the uh, the link, whatever it's called, um, just like a 1911. Um, and uh, as I said, the bushing, you can see the profile on the inside of the, uh, of the slide there is very similar. Um, and uh, it locks in the same position just in front of the chamber as well. Okay, um, right. Uh, so now we can uh, focus on the lower. Uh, so we can see 
the whole sort of uh, trigger group or hammer group comes out in one piece. Um, that's different from a 1911, uh, and uh, it's definitely an improvement uh, from a um, military standpoint, I would say. Uh, if something breaks, breaks in here, you can just replace the whole thing, you don't have to fiddle with it. Uh, so let's put that back. There we go. And then uh, we put the barrel inside of the slide. We're also going to have the, uh, the pushing. There we go. And we're also going to have the spring. It's going to go in here. Perfect. That's going to go on the frame with the uh, cross pin slide latch. And then our magazine apparently doesn't want to. Oh, we've got this clip on the side, of course. And then our magazine goes in. And we have successfully reassembled our Tokaro pistol. Now, uh, we're gonna continue by doing uh, the operation. So seeing how this thing actually works. Um, right, should be loaded. There we go. It looks very similar to a uh, Browning style pistol. Let's um, go into slow motion. You can see the barrel tilting just slightly. Uh, I didn't mention the caliber. Uh, these were, I believe, uh, or these are 25 um, caliber rounds. I don't know the exact measurements of the uh, of the cartridge, though. But it's as you can see, it's a necked cartridge, which is um, another interesting thing about this pistol. Uh, it is quite capable of um, it is quite capable at uh, penetrating armor because it has a necked cartridge, as you can see, uh, with a bullet that's small diameter. So when the, when the Americans went for the 45, which was larger than most of pistol calibers. Uh, the uh, Soviets went for a smaller cartridge, um, and uh, it's interesting. Um, you might imagine that uh, that cartridge is also at quite high velocity. Um, now, obviously, that has advantages and disadvantages. Um, the advantage mainly is to that it can penetrate armor quite easily or more easily. Disadvantage, obviously, that it doesn't have um, a lot of stopping power because of the small weight of the bullet. Alright, so we shot it empty. You can see it locks back on an empty mag, uh, just like a 1911 does. Um, so, what else do we have to do? Um, we have to go through the x-rays. Uh, we're gonna do that when we fire more. So let's uh, let's reload it or yeah let's reload it first of all so press the button there we go and then manually unload it there it is all right and then we can uh, fire it some more with the x-ray I mean it's just a 1911 so well, basically it's just a Browning style pistol so um, it's not that unusual uh, especially not in today's, today's world where pretty much every pistol on the market is a browning system so um, in one variation or another but most are pretty straightforward browning systems now let's go through the uh, different x-rays here you can see the extractor on the side and the uh, firing pin As you can see, that's very interesting. I didn't know that, but the spring, uh, the hammer spring, is actually appears to be inside of the actual hammer. That's pretty cool. That's one way to make things smaller and uh, more compact. That's pretty nice. All right, let's go through more of the X-rays. Got the barrel here. See it tilt, probably. Nice. 
Do we have another X-ray? Nope. That's all of them. Let's do uh, the final shot and then we'll do the cutaway. Oh yeah, look at that. That's nice. And it locked open. Let's uh, stop that and do the cutaway. Nice. You can see inside of the chamber here. Um, and uh, this uh, has grip panels on the side just like uh, a 1911. It does not have a grip safety like a 1911. Um, which uh, probably is a good thing. A, a grip safety is a weird sort of thing that I don't think you really need. Uh, it's just something that can prevent the gun to go off when uh, you want it to go off. Uh, now granted, uh, it can uh, save some um, precarious situations, but I don't know. I, I guess it makes sense from a military standpoint because generally um, soldiers have uh, a, a whole arrangement or a whole slew of accidents on the battlefield that you won't even imagine can happen uh, so I guess um, it's better that, that it is more foolproof than uh, less so anyway uh, let's go out of our um, operation mode and go into full disassembly mode I don't know how many parts it's got it says 42 okay so that's all right shouldn't be too complex to take apart um, mag comes out first we got to take it apart I don't know how many rounds it, it holds as you can see uh, it is just a single stack uh, I think it sort of holds like eight uh, or something like that it's very it's very similar to 1911 it's just something like that in that sort of realm Alright, these side panels come off. This got it's got a weird sort of mechanism inside, interesting. Very very cool. Alright, then we've got the mag release that comes apart by looks. Cool. And then the trigger with the yoke. Nice. It's just one piece, that's cool. Okay. And then we've got our side um, retention clip. And we've got our pin, the slide comes off, the spring, uh, that's got a, a bunch of little things on it, like a plug at the end. Okay, and then uh, we got the barrel, but we gotta remove this uh, bushing first of all. Barrel comes out the front, we have the uh, link. There we go, and then we've got our extractor on the side, it's got a little spring as well, we've got the firing pin in the back, it's got a pin holding it in, and a spring as well, alright, what else do we have, we've got a rear sight, nice, and that appears to be all for the slide, uh, so move on to the frame, we've got this uh, unit with the hammer, um, looks like we can take out the hammer and the spring. It's got a couple more springs in here. That's the actual sear. And then we've got this connector. Nice. And the rest is just an empty chassis. There's another spring here. Okay. Then we've got the trigger return spring. Alright. Uh, do we have anything else? Take a look inside. Oh yeah, these grip things come apart. Interesting. And this one as well. And that's it. That is one disassembled, completely disassembled Toker F pistol. Um, beautiful. Let's put it back together. All right. So where should we start? Let's do. Uh, let's do the the frame first of all. Uh, so. We've got our disconnector. We've got our sear. It's got a spring. So this is sort of similar to 1911, but sort of different at the same time. Definitely has the same lineage. Uh, 
but it's just sort of done with a different sort of flavor. Very cool. I mean, if you're gonna copy anything, um, you better copy the best. And the 1911 definitely at that time was the best pistol uh, you could get. So I don't know if they, uh, if the Soviets paid any royalties to anyone for this pistol. Um, I don't know if this was an official sort of um, adaptation of the system, or or they just copied it um, without giving a shit. So I don't know uh, how that worked. Um, I can just tell you that it uh, seems to be well well made um, and um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, now these things. Uh, are quite cheap on the market today because obviously um, they made a whole a whole bunch of them so and they also surplus them when they replace them obviously uh, so you can get them fairly reasonably um, like I would say from 200 to 300 bucks at least in Europe I would say um, can get them fairly easily and they're they're quite a, a, an interesting pistol for that kind of money um, wouldn't be the worst pistol if you had to use it for self-defense either uh, because the cartridge is quite potent it's quite powerful so I wouldn't uh, see any problem with that if either then obviously the capacity is um, limited all right, so let's uh, put together the slide. We've got the uh, a, uh, the firing pin. We've got the extractor. We've got the link that goes on the barrel. We've got the spring goes together with all of its sort of um, things, accoutrements, and then the barrel goes in with the spring or with the um, pushing and then the spring beautiful put that back on the frame with the uh, slide stop slide latch and the magazine um, but we are we have missed the uh, the clip as well there we go there we go and the mag and there you go one reassembled tucker pistol so anyway, um, I think uh, that's pretty much all that I can show you about this pistol, pretty much all that I can tell you about it. If you're interested, obviously I encourage you to read uh, up uh, on it. And um, I think that's probably enough for this video, so thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, you can press the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also check out my other videos and uh, I will see you next time.